Super 16 Sports Final. On a late night sports party continues. Welcome to another edition of the Super 16 Sports Final. I'm Ron Snyder alongside Landon Stoller. Can't wait for this week, Landon. Yeah, we got a full slate of 16 games, but only one Super 16 showdown this week, and it was a rivalry game in District Man, I've four. been waiting for this game all season. It's only 15 miles from Southern Columbia High School to Mount Carmel Area High School, but what turns the dial up even more for this week is that Mount Carmel has not beaten the Tigers since 2011. Oh, they know. 7-0 sounds nice, but 8-0 is even better when you can find a way to take out your rivals. They're playing without their starting quarterback, Cole Spears, all season. Let's go to the highlights and see what they could do. These guys fired up to go out there and see what they could do against the Tigers. First quarter, third and two. Mark Carmel goes to his bread and butter. Yeah, that's running the football. Xavier Diaz, that's 68 yards. A good running all the way to the end zone for a touchdown. 7-0 Red Tornado, second quarter. Southern with the wing T formation that they usually use and Loudon Murphy makes a move and he's in for the 12 yard touchdown that ties the game up at seven. So Matthew Belichick gets injured to the talented freshman in Gavin Marshallik and he finds Jacob Schultz open and he does the rest of the work. A 42 yard connection down to the 12 yard line and that leads to this. Luke Blessing cuts through. They had 363 yards rushing in this game on 51 carries, 14 to seven Mount Carmel but Southern had injuries this season, but they still have big play potential. Blake Wise connects with Carter Madden down to the eight yard line. Moments later, Madden takes it in for the touchdown, but the Red Tornadoes capitalize on five Southern Columbia turnovers, and they win this one, 35 to 21. Third ranked Danville battling a scrappy Berwick team. Danville wastes no time. Zach Gordon rolls out right, connects to, of course, Carson Persing, his 50th of his career, 200th reception, 7 0 Danville. But Berwick comes right back. Matthew Walchowski connects with Drew Wilk. Big game, but he fumbles the football and Gordon recovers. Second quarter, same drive for Danville. Ty Stauffer, look at him go, get out of his way. Breaking tackles, that's tough running. 19 yards to make it 13 to nothing, Ironman. Next possession, Danville making this look easy. Gordon connects with the fullback, Carson Kirsch. Only his second catch of the season. They've got plenty of weapons, 28 yard touchdown, and Danville wins in a route, 35 to nothing. To District 2 now, Randy Wolf and Western Wayne hosting Dunmore. Both teams looking for an impressive win on their resume. That team would be the Wildcats, emphatically. Frankie Leishon to Sean Owens. He's off to the races. 80-yard touchdown, 6-0 after a blocked PAT. Next Western Wayne possession. This time they keep it on the ground with Luke Janiszewski. He takes the rock and runs a 65 yards. The Wildcats get another score on the board. Bucks block another extra point, but it's still 12-0. Still in the first quarter for your folks, Janiszewski gets the handoff again. Dunmore cannot stop the kid. Another 40 yards tacked on to Luke's tally for the game. 20 to nothing after a two-point conversion. Janiszewski over 100 yards and three scores in the first quarter alone. Western Wayne with an impressive dominating win over Dunmore. 44 to nothing. Well, when the Schuylkill and Colonial Leagues combined as a football conference, it meant more games against area teams for our only area team in the Colonial League, Palmerton. The Blue Bombers with a great matchup tonight against North Schuylkill. Both teams are 5-2 on the season, both with just one loss in the Colonial Schuylkill's a red division. I was there for this wildly entertaining game with some early fireworks. Check this out. We're on first possession of the game. Matt Mahalik heaves it up. Looks like it's picked off here by Joey Flail, but Cole Serfoss just rips it away from him. Domination. That's either a 74-yard touchdown or an interception and a fumble. Either way, it's a Palmerton touchdown. Since it works so well, Mahalik throws another one up for Sarah Foss. This one a 69-yard score. Blue Bombers dropping a 14-0 lead in Ashland. But the Spartans rally. They're within 14-7 after one. Then in the second, Jared Tenari rumbles in from 11 yards out, puts his hand in the air, lets everybody know he scored the game-time touchdown. Then after an interception, North Schuylkill going for it all. Trevor Minalda to flail. Hey, some redemption for the young man. 43-yard touchdown, North Schuylkill wins a great game, 35-21. Lakeland trying to keep rolling against West Scranton. Lakeland driving early and they've got plenty of weapons like this guy, Dominic Spataro, connects with his receiver, John Siemens. The pass is knocked out of bounds inside the 10 yard line and that leads to this. They give it up to this guy, back up the middle. It's Spataro, the quarterback, keeping it himself, seven up in Lakeland. West Scranton hung around early though. Caden Berardi up top, take it to him. That is Evan Laborn body all the way in for the score, but man, Lakeland has too many weapons. Spataro, of course, you know who he likes to connect with. His tight end, Dominique 
Lakota. Lakota Dupree, excuse me, got to get his name out there, right? They certainly know his name when he finds the end zone. Lakota Dupree connects with the touchdown, and Lakeland wins this one 42 to 14. Dupree going to Holy Cross next year. Nanako, Coast, and Holy Redeemer, all the three of the Trojans wins this year blowouts, including last week against Tunkanic. Trojans already had the lead. Think another blowout win. A Lucas Stachowiak for the score. Love the camouflage uniforms, by the way. A little later, the handoff here goes to Zach Fox. It's a foot race to the end zone. He's going to make it. Dives in, and another touchdown here for the Trojans. More from the home team in this one. A Jalen Collins in a quarterback. The little play action after faking the handoff, hits his tight end, Seth Raymore for the score. Greater Nanakoke area, greater than Holy Redeemer tonight, 64 to 18. How about a nice matchup between Carbondale and Lackawanna Trail? First quarter, no score. Carbondale's Jonathan Orta gets the handoff. He finds the seam, and man, he's still going in the open, in the clear, in the end zone from 41 yards out. Chargers up 7 to nothing. Second quarter, it's 10 to nothing. Carbondale Trail trying to find some momentum. Steven Jervis fakes the handoff, drops back. Launches it down the field, and there's the senior waiting, Evan Litwin, for the 31-yard touchdown. That's how you work it, 10 to nothing, or 10-6. Carbondale, next possession for the Lions. Luke Gumble gets the touchdown on the ground. Two-point conversion is good. Trail goes up 14 to 10. Less than two minutes left in the half. Jervis, one more time. Up top, take it to him. There's Max Kimball for the 19-yard touchdown. Lackawanna Trail wins this one, 36 to 23. Pittston area hosting Tunkhannock. Patriots piling it on the Tigers early on. Harry Puglisi with a great game. 15-yard run, takes it down to about the six-yard line in the very next play. Puglisi takes it in from there, just like that, 7-0 Patriots. Later in the first quarter, Tigers with the ball. Ben Chilson trying to make a play. Instead, it's Puglisi coming down with the interception. Ensuing possession, guess who? It's Puglisi. Takes a half, yes. Takes it in for his second touchdown of the game. It's been a rough year for Tunkanic, but we'll get the Tigers in the highlight. Chilson to Colin. Madden for the score, but Pittston area wins big 55 to 12. 